December 20th. Um, so got back from church a little bit ago, uh, had some lunch, and now I'm going to open my advent and work on uh, wrapping some presents today. Um, so we'll start with our skein. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, you can hear blue. Right, this is Mooney. Oh. Very pretty. I like the colors. Very um reminds me of the forest, you know, with the greens and the uh browns and blues. Whoop. <laughs> uh Mooney, I believe, was um it's Professor Lupin, right? Because he was a um werewolf. Right? I'm like, <laughs> clearly, I'm a true fan. <laughs> but um, there we go. So that's our skein for the day. So the rest of my afternoon will be spent wrapping Christmas presents. Oh, we have a blue. Blue has entered. What are you sniffing? She sees the mess and she's like, mm, maybe not. But um... Yeah, I'll be wrapping Christmas presents today. Um, I'll show you what I have knitted as presents um, for other people. I'll show you as we go along. Um, I'm not going to show you my wrapping process because <laughs> some of you might get angry at me. I'm not the best um, present. <laughs> Thanks, Blue. I'm not the best present wrapper. Uh, I like a bag. <laughs> a bag with tissue paper. I can handle that. She's trying to maneuver. It's like a maze in here. But once all the presents are wrapped, hopefully it won't be that bad. Hopefully. That's like another plan. So I have off all this week. So in between, you know, getting together with, for coffee <laughs> with friends, because that's all I do anymore. Between that um, and actually, pardon me, getting stuff ready for Christmas. I will be, um, I have some like house cleaning stuff that I want to do, like, I want to completely purge my kitchen, like I want to purge this room, figure out an organizational system. <laughs> um, it's, it's just, I'm getting to a point in my life where like I'm overwhelmed <laughs> and I feel like I have a lot of clutter in my life um, and like I just want to like get rid of a lot of it. You know, a lot of stuff that I'm not using, you know, stuff that's been sitting in cupboards for like years and like hasn't been touched. Um, trying to figure out things from there. Um, I will also be writing uh, care cards um, for my knitted items, like, you know, how to wash them and stuff. Um, so yeah, again, I'll let you go and I'll talk to you later. That seems to be like what I say all the time now is like, talk to you later, talk to you later, talk to you soon. But um, cause I don't know what else to say to close this out <laughs> uh, or in between each video. So um, but yeah. Uh, what else am I supposed to say? I don't know what else to say besides I'll talk to you later. Maybe, um, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to try to be funny. Uh, so I'll just end. All right. So it's been a, an hour or so later and I haven't really done any wrapping yet, but I've been making, uh, these little, um, uh, care cards. I am blocking off my, um, my last name just to save my identity. It says, uh, Handmade with Love by Caitlin. Yeah, I really like these little cards and I put a little moth on it, of course. And now I'm going to show you uh, the, the rest of the gifts that I knit up for my family for Christmas. Uh, so I've been working on these socks since 
February. <laughs> um, yeah, I like just decided that I'm like, okay, this is going to happen. I'm going to make socks for my family and um, it's going to be great. <laughs> so I'll go one by one um, with the ones that I started um, and the way down. <laughs> so the first one, and these are all Arna and Carlos patterns that can be found on their website. I uh, use pretty much the same colors. So if you go onto their website and uh, pull up their sock patterns, you'll be able to find them. Um, so let me just make sure I get these names right. <laughs> the first sock is the um, Dovre socks. Um, I don't know, I'm not good with my Scandinavian languages, I'm sorry. Um, here we go. Um, this is a very simple and easy pattern. Um, it was really cool. I, I had a lot of fun making them. Um, this is for a man's foot, again, size 10. And this is how big it is. I really hope that it fits him. Um, these are for my dad, by the way. Uh, I hope, yeah, I just hope it turns out fine. Um, I'm trying not to stress out over it. But, um, but yeah, and then like the heel is like a slip stitch heel. This was an afterthought heel, by the way, um, which I thought was interesting. Um, the heel is slip stitch and so is the toe. And um, I just thought it was a cool little detail. Um, but I really have, like how they turned out. They're very Christmassy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope that he likes them. And yeah. Um, these are the Dover socks. So that's pair number one. Um, when I knit this pattern, I was watching, um, or I was binge watching Frasier. So yeah, that's like, <laughs> like I said, like I think in my first or second podcast episode, when you're making something and you're watching something at the same time or listening to something or something in your life happens, it like cements it in your head. So when I see this pattern, I think of Frasier. Um, Sock number two is pr is pretty much the same. Uh, these are for my brother. Um, oh, I closed out of that one. Crap. Uh, these are the Dorothe socks. It's uh, fair out of socks with short bow heel. These are in green, green and gray. Um, yeah, again. It's like a, um, it's a tweed, so that's why you got those. The green is a tweed, so you got little things like that. Again, a size 10 foot. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm <laughs> they're big. They're huge. Um, but I hope they like them and I hope they fit. But uh, again, knitted these while also watching Frasier. So nice memories with these. Uh, I have a feeling they're gonna be way too long. Uh, like this is what I look up how long the foot is and then I take away two inches for the toe and then I finish it and I'm like this is and I like measure the heel too and I'm like this is way too long. Like, there's no way. <laughs> um, I don't know at least the effort was put into it right the love and care. Uh, the next pair of socks are for Oh, both of those were written in just regular four ply merino, um, your standard sock, sock base. Uh, the next one we got is the Filane socks, uh, and these are knit in, um, alpaca, Regia Alpaca Soft, and these are for my mom. I made these in like the spring and it was starting to get warm and like I was just it was hot <laughs> but these are like these are like slippers they're so thick and warm and yeah I like I love the the look of the pattern on this guy and I love the colors too so yeah that's sock number number three um Look at the size difference. I'm just like, I'm just laughing at myself, but it's like too late to like, <laughs> I know a man's foot and a woman's foot are very different, but like, I mean, it's not that much bigger. I don't think. 
well, I mean, worst comes to worst, they can use these as like hunting socks or something and they can wear over their other socks, right? Right? I don't, but I keep telling myself. So, sock number two, or sock number three. Ooh, my, my laptop almost fell. Um, do you guys get nervous about your knitting gifts? Because I do, 100%. Um, and then sock number four was for my sister. These are the Hele socks. And these are like a true fair isle. So here they are. The foot is definitely a lot, is definitely smaller. But it's, they stretch, but her foot is smaller than mine. So I just made it slightly smaller. Uh, despite blocking it, it's still a little wonky because of the amount of color work there is. But um, yeah, I like how they turn out. I think they're fun. Again, a fun little wear around the house kind of sock. The legs are very long. The legs on all these socks come like to mid calf. But there's that. And then of course, the Mete socks. Oh, these are, um, these were a premium yak. Pardon me. Um, yeah, Regia premium yak. And then the Mente socks in the premium silk. Yeah, and um, I hope my family likes them. <laughs> it's hard knitting socks for people like you know their shoe size, but you can't be like, here, try this on. Like, how does this fit? I can only gauge off my own foot. And I think my sister's feet are like one size smaller than mine. So I'm like, okay, it's a little bit smaller. Like, it should be fine. Should be fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, those are my. Christmas presents and this should be coming out. Um, I don't know if I'm going to release it the day after Christmas or the Sunday after Christmas. Um, I'm trying to keep it consistent with releasing on Sundays, but we shall see. Uh, but with um, their socks, I am giving them mugs as well. So I'll give you an example since my sister's mug is out. So here's a mug. And then I'm going to roll them up <laughs> and stick it in there. <laughs> Maybe a little bit higher to make it a little, you know. So that's how they're, all their Christmas gifts are going to come in this year, all wrapped up and put in a mug. <laughs> but um, yeah, low-key Christmas gift this year, but a uh, gift that I hope they will all enjoy. Very cozy. I was telling my husband that now that I have this um, this podcast and this Instagram and everything uh, that I find myself using cozy all the time that it sounds like cliche as if it's like my catchphrase. <laughs> like, oh, that's so cozy. I love how cozy that is. I love your cozy vibe. Like, and I'm like, oh, like that's, it sounds really weird coming from me because cozy's in my screaming. <laughs> but yeah, that's my, um, my Christmas plans. And um, I'm going to leave it here. Um, I might talk to you later on tonight. Um, I do intend on knitting more of my pajama cardigan. I did finish the uh, the second front panel. So the next on the list is to make the pockets. And um, so I think I'll, I'll try to make both pockets tonight. Um, since I don't have to wake up early for work in the morning tomorrow, <laughs> I can stay up late if I want. You know, I feel like a little kid <laughs> again, like, no school, no school. I get to stay up until midnight. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so fun times. <laughs> right, I'll let you go. I will talk to you later. December 21st. 
Um, I'm in a different position today because uh, my husband wrapped uh, Christmas presents yesterday and uh, they're all on top of the bed. <laughs> and um, instead of moving them, it's a little bit lazy and just was like, you know what, I'll sit over here on my chair. Um, I'll move some things around later today. But um, I wanted to get things started with our Advents game today. I have uh, I have plans for the rest of the day, so I wanted to get this started. All right. This is pretty. This is a Dementor's Kiss. I like the um, the mixture of the uh, the cool uh, like blue in there. Very pretty. They have a lot of um. They have a lot of stripey colors in this uh, advent, which I'm not against. But I think they're pretty cool. Um. So yeah, that's our advent for today. Uh, this morning I will be <laughs> trying to guess what I'm doing this morning. <laughs> um, I am getting coffee with my friend today. Um, we're driving up to. Oxford to Holy Grounds. Um, technically, Pennsylvania, they're not doing uh, dine-in anymore because of COVID or dine-in. Like, that's like one of their restrictions. But um, we can still go in and order the coffee and, you know, drink it <laughs> in our car. Um, so, and we figure like, okay, it takes us 45 minutes to get up there anyway. We're already going to be like with each other for an hour and a half. Like, we don't have to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and both of us don't mind drinking and eating in the car. So, uh, that's what we'll do this morning. And then, um, yeah, I think I'm going to try to accomplish some chores today. And I think I'm going to try to tackle the kitchen. Yesterday I worked on my pajama cardigan. Um, the, the way that Judy has it lined up is that you do the back panel, the two side panels, the pockets, the sleeves, then the button band. So I finished one pocket yesterday and halfway through the second one. I tried to get through the second one last night, but I was like falling asleep. <laughs> but, um, so I'm almost done that. And then I think I'm going to take a little break from the pajama card again and then move on to something else, whether that be the, um, the habitation throw or, um, continue working on the storm's approach hat. Um, I'll, I'm going to figure it out. Uh, so the whole time, I don't know. I like woke up yesterday morning and um, I was like, oh, I have to get the pockets done on that, uh, on the pajama card again. And immediately the um, Natasha Benningfield song, Pocket Full of Sunshine was stuck in my head all day. So the whole time I was knitting it, I had, uh, you know, I'm not going to sing it, but the song stuck in my head and made me think of, um, have any of you guys seen the movie um, Easy A? It's with um, one of the Emmas. Um, Emma Stone it's like it was like one of her first movies where she was like the star and um, there's a portion in the song where someone gives her a card and it plays the song and she's like oh it's the worst song and then it goes through a montage where she like keeps opening it and like starts singing along to it and like really getting into it and then like the battery dies <laughs> and she realizes she's like oh <laughs> but um, I recommend Easy A it's a good coming of age coming of age thing it kind of it's kind of kind of parallels um the scarlet letter um but it, it's very good if you have teenage daughters I would say 15 and older um or 14 and like it's very good um it's it's probably one of my one of my favorite coming of age movies um I haven't watched it in a long time <laughs> but maybe I'll watch it eventually um I also have this speaking of like watching things I have this desire to watch all the Frasier Christmas episodes. <laughs> I don't know why I feel so drawn to Frasier in particular and like his Christmas or like their, not him, but that shows Christmas episodes. But there's just something about Frasier that is very comforting to me. And um, I think it's because my fond memories of Christmas were in the late 90s, early 2000s. I was born in 94. Um, so I can remember really uh, like 
I guess starting at 98 or 99 and then into the 2000s and like obviously my parents watched Frasier and so like that's how like I knew what it was and like maybe I just associate Frasier with that time in my life when I was you know a young child uh between the ages of four and eight maybe um and you know like Christmas is so magical for you during that time in your life and I remember um I do remember Christmases and the first home that we lived in it was a tiny little house and it was it, it was it's my favorite home that we've ever lived in um but I was a little too young to remember most of it but I tell my mom this all the time but like my fondest Christmas memory was probably the first year that we moved into our second house and I think that was the last year we did a real Christmas tree. So we had gone and cut it down and brought it back. But we stopped doing real Christmas trees because my sister and brother were like having allergic reactions to them. Um, and, you know, like we decorated it. And my mom used to have this big chunky stereo and we would listen to um, our local Christmas station all day. So we had a variety of Christmas music. But then at night, she would turn on either uh, Barbara Streisand or Celine Dion. So like those two, um, those two Christmas albums are really solidified in my head. And like, it was just extra warm and extra cozy in like that living room that we had that real tree in and our kitchen was painted a burgundy red and um, like it, it, I don't know what it was about that Christmas, but that's like the quintessential Christmas cozy coziness that I love, and like that's what I think of when I think of my childhood Christmas. I mean, all my childhood Christmases were great, but like it's that one that's solidified in my head. And again, that was the early two thousands, so maybe that's why I'm drawn <laughs> to Fraser during this this time. So I think either tonight. Or sometime this week, I might sit down and just go through Hulu and watch all the, the Frasier Christmas specials. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you guys have, like, do you, when you guys think of Christmas, is there a certain time in your life that you revert back to? Um, or is there certain traditions that you have that you like to uphold every uh, year? Are there, you know, certain Christmas movies or shows with Christmas specials that you love to watch every year? Um, let me know. I love talking about these sort of things. Uh, uh, I've always loved Christmas. There was a time in my life, you know, as a teenager, I'm like, okay, it's Christmas. Like, fine, whatever. Like, what's, what's the point of Christmas? It's just consumerism. You know, like, you know how you think as a teenager, but, um... But yeah, when I think whenever, even like, like as I've gotten older, especially after I got married and started to make Christmas my own, um, in my work, I'm always scheduling, I'm always looking ahead at the schedule. And so as soon as I got, when it gets to a point like in no October or November, where like, I'm starting to look ahead at like the first week of Christmas, like I get that, like that Christmas spirit fills your, <laughs> your, your heart and I get excited. I'm like, oh, it's almost here. It's almost here. And uh, literally, it's almost here. It's four days away. Um, but I don't know if you guys feel the same way about Christmas or if Christmas is hard. I know that Christmas can be hard for some people, um, especially this year. But um, is there anything that like makes it a little bit more bearable? Um, so yeah, that's my little rant for the day. <laughs> um, I got to uh, make sure the dogs are okay before I head out. So I will, um, I'll let you guys know how good the coffee was because <laughs> I know it's going to be good. Um, my friend who I took out to coffee a few weeks ago, um, she saw me in church yesterday and she was like, Caitlin, I went out for coffee with someone else at another like coffee shop. Well, like Delaware has like these like bakeries that like disguise themselves as coffee shops. So like it's a bakery, but we also sell coffee. Um, for some reason but I don't know why you can't just be a baker <laughs> like you're already doing enough but um so my friend went to like a bakery slash coffee house and she was like let me tell you it did not touch holy grounds it was not <laughs> and I'm like see I tell you like this is like the best place to go um so <laughs> every time we see each other that's like all we talk about <laughs> is uh the idea of opening up a coffee shop and um because that's always something that like 
I've wanted to do, my sister's wanted to do, apparently my friend has wanted to do this as well. And it's like, let's do it. Let's just go for it. Um, that would be cool. I would quit my full-time job for that. Um, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Clearly I'm not getting into a library anytime soon. So uh, I'm going to coffee shop with you. <laughs> I can run a business, right? Maybe, <laughs> but, um, uh, okay. For real, I'll let you go. Talk to you guys later. I hope you enjoy your, your day. <laughs> right. I don't know. Bye. -bye. Hello everyone. Uh, it's later on in the day. Uh, my little one, May, is like staring at me. And she's like, what are you, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? <laughs> um, it's later on in the day. I went out and got coffee with my friend. Uh, drove all the way up to Oxford again. <laughs> went to Holy Grounds. Uh, had some nice chit chats with her. It was, it was nice to catch up. Uh, I did... <laughs> Uh, go into her home afterwards, and uh, she has a pet chameleon. Uh, his name is Walter. So I got to meet Walter, and I learned that her son, her son's in fourth grade, um, is teaching himself how to crochet. So I found that to be really sweet, and uh, I got to see some of the things he was working on, and his gauge is really good <laughs> for someone who is, you know, teaching himself. Um, is very sweet. Apparently he sits on uh, his Zoom class, and then he just crochets as he's going along and you love to see it. <laughs> so, um, so I came home, uh, I've been catching up on some vlogmases and like just general videos in my watch later. And I finished, um, the pockets for the, uh, for the pajama cardigan. And I think they turned out well. Uh, I really love this pattern stitch. Um, it's very, I've said it in a podcast before, but it's very, uh, meditative very relaxing so i'll probably post a picture of that on instagram uh then i just have the sleeves the button band and to put it together um i am going to take a break from knitting for a couple hours because i am starting to feel that carpal tunnel in my uh, left hand uh so i'm going to start uh cleaning my kitchen and purging things and like get it working on that organizational project uh, i do have a friend coming over tomorrow night for like a christmas movie night uh with some cheese and some wine you know because i'm a i I've, i'm getting the hang of the charcuterie thing so I'm, i like to do it as often as possible and then wednesday morning i'm having two other friends over for um just an impromptu brunch uh, so i'm trying to get my kitchen ready for that uh, we'll see how far i get today um hopefully it won't take too long um, so I will let you go. I'll let you know uh, when I start working on another project, which I'm sure I will tonight. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna pick up the uh, habitation throw again or if I'm gonna try to get a couple more rows in on the um, Storm's Approach hat. Storm's Approach hat has been uh, neglected since Friday. I mean, it hasn't been too long. And the habitation throw has been neglected since Thursday, I think. I was trying to finish up the left panel on the pajama cardigan and then finish those uh, um, pockets, which I didn't expect to take as long as I did. They each took a couple of hours. They're seven inches long. And um, yeah, the pattern stitch, it takes up. It's not, it's not super quick, but it looks beautiful. So, all right, I'll let you go and I will talk to you later. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Vlogmas Day 28. Hi, you coming in? <laughs> I'm still kind of amazed up here, um, just with stuff that needs to be thrown out and you know, whatever. Um, so she's slowly making her way around. Uh, but it's 22nd day of December, so we're gonna open up our 22nd advent. I have a uh, busy day ahead of me, or at least I intend for it to be a busy day. Um, so let's see here. All right, we got Time Turner. Very pretty, love these colors. And then you got the Time Turner pin right there. Very nice. Blue, what do you think? I'm trying to get out of here. 
<laughs> what about you, May? We uh, changed our collars out too. Blue has like, come here, come here. <gasps> Ooh. Well, May has like a red collar. She normally has a purple one. But we changed it to red for Christmas. And Blue has an array of collars. Oh, you can get down. Ooh. Here, does that make you feel better? Here. Blue. But yeah, Blue has an array of collars. Come on. Look. Show me a pretty collar. Now she has a red velvet collar on today. It's her Christmas collar. <laughs> yeah my day um after i'm done filming this i'm going to head up to trader joe's where i live um the closest trader joe's is about um 45 minutes away <laughs> all the good stuff is at least 45 minutes away um so and i i go to trader joe's just to do some standard shopping and shopping for um, the little get togethers I'm having over the next couple days. Um, I just thought it would be a different experience than going just to my local Acme or Giant. But, um, so uh, I did something yesterday that um, I don't regret, but it, it kind of like made me laugh. I ended up buying the Ritual Dyes Winter Solstice um pack <laughs> basically uh that was a big treat to myself uh but like i held off on the summer sol solstice and the fall sol solstice <laughs> if i can say solstice correctly um there are two uh packages and um and i just i don't know there's something about the winter solstice one i like the pattern in it i liked what came with it i like the bag <laughs> Stop crying. Do you want to just sit? But um, there was just something about it that I was like, no, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for this one. Um, so I did. And uh, I'm not sure when that'll come in, but I'm sure it'll be sometime in January. Um, but I'm excited for that. It comes with a really nice sock pattern and uh, they're mohair socks. So that'll be fun. And, um, you know, their new uh, Selkie base, which it looks like to be a tweed. Um, I'm excited for it. It'll be fun. And then, of course, you get a cool bag with it, which, you know, uh, you gotta love that bag and a candle, I think. Uh, that I think, I know. <laughs> um, I ordered it. It was, you know, make sure the money that I spent on it was worth it. And, of course, it's. So, um, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. So... I'm still waking up, so I'm sorry I have a little low energy. I mean, I'm normally low energy, but I'm lower energy than normal, I think. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'll let you go. I'll talk to you later. Um, I will, uh, I didn't end up picking up any more knitting last night, the last time I talked to you, so um, I ended up doing other things that night. So I'll, um, I'll definitely be picking up my knitting again today. Um, but yeah. So I'll let you go and I will talk to you guys later. Well, turns out I'm not leaving right now because I went to get into my car and I backed out and I heard a noise, a noise that I've heard a couple times before. And um, I got out of my car and my back tire was completely flat. <laughs> Like, great. Of course, like, on a day that I have to run a crap ton of errands, like, I'm just... Uh, but I will keep you posted, I guess. <laughs> All right. You guys. So, uh, my aunt texted me this afternoon, my aunt Jen, who watches uh, the podcast. Um, she texted me and said that something was in my mailbox. And she has sent me the sweetest gift. It's a little yarn ball and it has my name on it. <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. It's so beautiful and so thoughtful. <laughs>
I love it. I don't have one of these yarn bowls. So like, this is, this is so awesome. I love it. And then of course she included, you know, a sweet little, little card and uh, some llama socks because, you know, they're essential. <laughs> um, but that just like after the crappy morning I had, that totally has made my day. <laughs> it was so sweet of her. Thank you so much, Aunt Jen. It was so nice and I love it so much and I can't wait to use it. <laughs> Wednesday, December 23rd. Um, I'm sorry for <laughs> my face. Uh, I just washed it. So, you know, it's a little red and everything's coming through, <laughs> of course. Um, I've, it's about 9.30. Um, I've been up and running since about seven. Um, I had to go get my tire changed or replaced and get a car wash and, you know, all that fun stuff. But now I'm back at home and um, I'm having two friends come over for like a little brunch, like low key, you know, like I have a quiche and some like muffins and stuff and um, stuff for mimosas if, <laughs> if people want. Um, but before I get things started, I thought I would start with the, uh, the Advent skein today. Let's get this guy open. You would think after 23 days I would get the hang of this. Ooh, lost the label. Hold on. Okay, so right here we have Patronus. Very beautiful. Blues and blacks and grays and whites. I think it's a lovely, fun color. Very uh, wintry, very um, ice queen kind of vibes. Yeah, I like it. So, yeah, other than having friends over for brunch today, um, I plan on at least getting the body of the Storm's Approach hat done. I'm thinking about casting on that cowl that I've been talking about for a while. I did find a pattern um, that interests me, so I have to cake up that, uh, the Stress Knits yarn. Um, I need to straighten up in here. <laughs> I've kind of given up on the whole um, purging this room. <laughs> Just, I'm like, that, that, that's more of a weekend project and not like a afternoon project. Um, I'll probably wait until after Christmas and after, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get thing. I'm going to get started. I'm going to start cleaning up a little bit. Um, my friends will be over in about an hour and a half. Um, so yeah, here we go. So I will let you guys go and I'll talk to you all later. up in my little knitting cabinet or a yarn cabinet I should say and I thought I would bring you all along while I skein up uh, the um, no trail to follow um, stress knits DK weight yarn uh, this is the yarn I'm going to use for um, the cowl that I have in mind um, is the cowl that I picked uh, uses bulky weight so I'm gonna hold these two skeins uh, double. It's a, it's a big boy. Um, I'm gonna hold him double and then I should get a bulky cow out of it. In my head what I wanted was chunky with cables and as I mentioned before I've never I've never attempted cables so this will be a first for me. So I have my swift all taken care of it's all even but uh yeah I um where are my scissors they're behind me 
<sighs> All right, so I just finished brunch with my friends. And that was nice and relaxing. Uh, nice moment to spend with them. Um, these women are, um, they've been in my life for some time and it was nice to have them over for for a lunch or a brunch or whatever. I, um, I picked up some pastries and a quiche at Trader Joe's. I had, um, you know, mimosas all set up. Hopefully this isn't too loud. But yeah, it was nice to have them over. It's a little shaky, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I figured, whatever. Um, maybe this isn't the best angle for you. We'll see. But yeah, it was nice. Nice to have a little Christmas brunch. Um, I've been so busy this week with getting together with people and hosting and it's filled the void in my heart that I've <laughs> talked about a little while ago about how December is always so busy for me um, and it wasn't really or it didn't look to be like it was going to be that busy so I felt like something was missing from my life. Um, but it's been nice to, we were silly able to have our little parties, our masked up parties um, at a building that's bigger than my home so we were able to social distance. Um, so it was nice to head up those and host those and prepare for them. Um, and then, you know, being able to, you know, grab coffee with friends and, um, have, you know, wine and cheese nights and, uh, brunches like today. Um, it was just, oh, we're all tangled up here for somehow, somehow we got tangled up. Um, but yeah, it was just, just been nice to still be able to socialize. I know it's harder in other areas of the, of the country and in the world where it's not as easy or as simple to do something like that, um, because of restrictions or whatever. Um, but I've been, you know, thankful to be able to still be able to do such things, uh, to an extent. I mean, when I say party, it's not like lo like a large group of people. It's you know, select few, and it's you know like it's it's not I don't know <laughs> like it's not like like a company party where there's you know tens and tens of people. But, um, but yeah, this time of the year has really made me appreciate my both my in-person friends and my virtual friends. I've, you know, made such great friends with all of you guys on here and I've made, you know, new friends and discovered things about this community that I didn't know, like all good things. Um, I've just, it's, you know, 2020 has been rough in some aspects, but it's also been um, pretty great in other ways. And I'm thankful for that. And maybe I might not have realized that um, without a pandemic because I tend to overload myself. All right, so we got one cake done. We'll move on to cake number two or skein number two. It's easy for us to point out or to realize the negatives of this year. It was very easy for us to do that. Um, but I would encourage you to consider any of the good that came out of this year for, in your own little lives. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be anything big. It could be, you know, as small as, you know, because of the pandemic, I was able to focus more on my hobby. And like, that's true for me personally. Um, I was able to dedicate more time to knitting and, um, I took the plunge into starting my own, you know, knitting podcast and my, and my knitting Instagram and things that I wouldn't have had time to do if my life was still as busy as it was prior to the pandemic, you know, um, 
you know, during that time, like I had, I still have a lot of downtime, despite still being, despite the busyness starting to creep back in again, slowly but surely. Uh, but I still find time to dedicate to my knitting and you guys and, you know, just developing my, my skills and learning making friends and, and such things. What about, you know, what did you take from this year that, because like I mentioned, it's so easy to focus on the negative. It's so easy to say like how bad of the year 2020 was. Um, because yes, of course it was. And it was, 2020 was an awful year in most aspects, but there's, you know, some good can still come from it. Um, have you guys thought of what your plans are? So in addition to, you know, we have our 2020 reflections and what about our 2021 projections? Like, are there any, do you have any goals, like specifically related to knitting? It doesn't have to be, or knitting or fiber work or whatever. Um, but are there any goals that you would like to accomplish? Any, oh, I'm all twisted up here. Any, um, sorry, pause, <laughs> got a little stuck. Any goals that you would like to accomplish? Any projects that you would like to complete? I guess getting back to the pick nine. I don't know if you're doing the pick nine or if you just have, you know, a general list of things that you want. Like, is there, is there anything new that you want to try? Like, like, okay, 2021 is the year that I finally attempt to knit a sweater. Or 2021 is the year that I finally try to teach myself how to crochet, you know, etc. Is that, you know, have you had things in mind for that? I, I want to write them all down once I start um, moving planners or preparing my 2020 planners. I think my next podcast, I, I would like to release uh, the Sunday after New Year's. Um, I want to talk to you all about my plans for 2021, or my rough plans, I should say. starting to feel the um <laughs> the sleepiness starting to get uh a little tired during these times despite you know enjoying the time that I have with my friends and I'm still an introvert <laughs> still need to you know have that moment of rest I don't know if you can relate or not I feel like the knitting community is full of introverts because, you know, knitting is a mostly solitary hobby. I mean, you have your knitting groups, of course, which I've never been part of. Um, yeah. Maybe I should find like a virtual knitting group or something like maybe that could be another goal for 2021. You know, just to make, make new friends or like try to like get all my, my current friends you know, like maybe once a month I could set up like, you know, a Zoom call with everyone or or a FaceTime session and we could all just catch up with each other. I would like to um, start like, like it's one thing to be friends with someone on the internet, but it's another thing to be like, you know, friends, you know, for lack of a better term, in real life. And I would like to become friends in real life with a lot of you guys. I know it's hard because this country or this world is so big um, and it's not always easy to just, I mean, especially now, to hop on a plane, go to a different state, go to a different country, go to a different region of the world to meet, you know, the friends that you meet online. Oh, but yeah. I guess that's what right right what what's the New York knitting um convention Reichenbach um I've never been clearly um uh, but 
that's like the big one, right? Like that's the big convention um, that everyone seems to go to. But I would like to attend one of those and hopefully get to meet, you know, a lot of people. Oh boy, we are all messed up here. <laughs> My goodness. Winders all twisted up. There we go. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> Whatever. So here are my two stress knits cakes. <laughs> They're so soft and squishy. I love the initial cakeness. The initial cake. I could fall asleep on it. <laughs> and I love these this these colors. Can't really see it here, but it's like a um like a super light, like a mint green with some like purple and like some like orange flecks in there. It's beautiful. I think it's a really good winter color. Like post Christmas. Just like how like when I look at this, Haku by Bumblebee Acres, I think, winter as well. I don't know. I don't know why. But yeah, these are winter colors for me. Hi, Blue. Alrighty, guys. I will let you go. I will catch up with you later. I'm going to try to try to knit some more um, my... Carpal tunnel has really been flaring up today. Um, I, I do love knitting on the Storm's Brooch hat, but it's been really flaring up my um, my carpal tunnel. I don't know why, but um, it is. So it's, I've been doing it. It's been a slow process um, with that hat, um, even though in my mind, I'm like, okay, just keep going, like finish it, you know, like just finish it. Um, but it's easier said than done. So I might try to knit something a little bit looser like maybe I'll get this started. We shall see. Um, alrighty, I'll let you guys go. Blue says, please stop talking. She says, everyone's tired of hearing you. No one cares. <laughs> just kidding. Um, that's just Blue talking. The diva. Um, but yeah, I'll let you guys go. <laughs>
because I'm not going to have time to show you tomorrow. So we'll just get it all done now. What are your guys' uh, Christmas traditions? Like, do you open presents on Christmas or do you do it Christmas Eve? I know, like, I've been learning um, in Scandinavia, like, they celebrate Christmas, like, Christmas Eve. Like, Christmas Eve is a big day. Um, so we have Firebolt. Very pretty. I love these colors. This burgundy with the, the tan. It's very lovely. All right, then we have the big one. Let's see, the full stain. Oh, wow. Beautiful. God rest ye merry hippogriff. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous. Stunning, stunning. And uh, wow, I don't, I don't know what I would make with this. <laughs> um, socks, a hat, maybe. Um, wow, it's just beautiful. I think it's so pretty. Very uh, unique. But like, it's also, it still rings Christmas. So yeah, that's the end of the advent. I, I really like it. Um, I, I haven't touched my habitation throw all week, but I have plenty of time to work on it. But I really liked all the colors in this. I thought they were fun and, you know, unique and interesting. So I'm excited to get them all on. I'm not gonna put this one in it. Um, this is, but um, excited to get them all in the throw. Sorry, May's crying. Um, so, more yarn and related stuff. Um, I was able to finish my um, Storms Approach hat. I finished it today right before we opened presents. Um, I really liked it and I think Kelsey did a great job um, with the pattern writing. Um, it was very easy to understand. Um, I love the bramble stitch. There was a part where I did mess up a little bit but um, I was just like, you know, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> like you, you might be able to see it, but if I keep moving it, then maybe you won't see it. <laughs> but, um, but I like it. I'll put it on. I did the, I did the version that had like a slight slouch. Uh, her version has like the most slouch, but I like it. I think it's, it turned out very nice. And I like the color. I was a little concerned about how the mohair showed up, um, alongside the DK initially, but now I really like it. It just adds that, that extra texture, extra texture to, to the hat that's already full of texture. But yeah, I highly recommend her pattern. And um, I don't know if she's still doing her kits, but if she does have a couple kits available, definitely order from her on her Etsy shop. Um, so it was beautiful colors in there. Um, so yeah, that's my hat. I'm probably gonna, either have um, my sister or Phil take pictures of me in this hat and like put up like, you know, good pictures on Instagram uh, later on this week, hopefully. So yeah, there we go. And um, as mentioned, uh, Phil and I open our, sorry, my hair. <laughs> Phil and I open our uh, Christmas presents on Christmas Eve and we've already done that. And I wanted to share with you something exciting. So Phil, ordered me a drop spindle and I can't remember what, let's see, I can't remember where he got the drop spindle from, but I know it was an Etsy shop. So he got me a drop spindle and with the drop spindle came some 100% 100% alpaca. Look at how beautiful. It's so soft. You have no idea. Well, maybe if you do spin, you do have an idea. Um, like, I don't want to like pull it too much, but it, oh, it's so soft and so lovely. Uh, so it came with that. And also he ordered me a whole bunch <laughs> of wool. Um, so I'm really excited because I want to learn how to spin this 
in 2021 like that's a goal that I have I want to learn how to spin and I want to learn how to crochet so these are like you know like two big big deals you know and this is a just a pound of uh, sheep's wool so yeah um I'll be watching some tutorials on that and um trying to figure that out I'm excited for it I really am and if you guys spin as well, if you have any pointers, I would really appreciate them. Um, I wanted to try the drop spindle first to see if I liked it. And then I know it's a much longer process, but like I would love, if I do like the process of spinning, I would like to get like an actual like spinning wheel. I know that's like a huge investment though. Um, but I wanted to give this a try first before I went and dropped all that money on a <laughs> spinning wheel. But I'll keep you guys up to date on that. Um, but yeah, uh, so so that's all I have for you today. I wanted to thank you so much for tuning in to Vlogmas. Um, sorry, I thought someone was crying and it was just a squeaky toy. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for tuning in to Vlogmas these past four weeks. Um, I've really appreciated um you know, getting to know you through this and you getting to know me and engaging with everyone through all this. Uh, you learned a lot about me and a lot about my life outside of this room. <laughs> um, and, and I learned a lot about you guys too. And I really had fun with it. Um, and I think I would do one again next year, <laughs> or maybe I'll try to do like another daily vlog or a weekly vlog from time to time. Um, I do think it's fun. And, uh, and I enjoy this. <laughs> um, and if you like it, let me know. Um, so yeah, this is where I leave you. I will be posting this on the uh, 27th, which is the Sunday after Christmas. So uh, it's going to be late, but I am going to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Um, and I will talk to you again when I post uh, like an actual podcast um, in the beginning of 2021. Um, so I'm going to leave it here for now, unless I do decide to sprinkle in some little uh, clips throughout uh, tonight and tomorrow. Uh, but I just wanted to stay, say um, thank you so much for visiting with me. I really love visiting with you. Uh, stay safe out there. Keep knitting, and I will see you all later. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas.